Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Ted Carr here with Friends and Positivity, episode number two. Today we've got my friend Tucker on the line. And Tuck is someone I met last summer at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Fruit festivals are really where I meet most of my friends. And uh, when I met Tuck, it was like I was meeting this mystic guru. Like everything he said, it just felt really, really good. It, it felt as if I was speaking with someone who was just from another time and from some, someone who just knew a lot about human nature and who just spoke truth that really resonated with me. Tuck's the kind of guy who when he starts talking people start gathering around and just start listening. The last couple times I spoke with Tuck I really wish I had recorded it so this time I'm glad we caught it on audio for you to listen to. I really think you're gonna enjoy this one. Tuck just finished a well, by the time you hear this, actually, he may uh, he may still be fasting, actually. But in all likelihood, if you're listening to this in the year 2019, Tuck has returned to the world of eating. But in this podcast, he is on day 33 of a water fast. So this is what someone sounds like when they haven't eaten any food for 30 days, 33 days. And uh, he's actually kept very, very busy during this time as well. It's not like he just sat around, laid in bed for 30 days and did nothing. He kept up his active lifestyle as usual for these 33 days, which uh, oof, is very, very, you know, is very unique to Tuck. Most people would never do that. Most people would not recommend doing that. But Tuck is a unique individual, and I think that you're going to get a lot out of this podcast. So enjoy what you're about to hear, and I hope to see you in the near future at a fruit festival so we can become friends as well because you know fruit festivals are the place to to meet friends who are full of positive energy and uh this podcast is really born out of that so do enjoy episode two of friends and positivity without further ado here we go what's up dude (laughs) tell tell me what you've been doing for the past 34 days awesome man so Honestly, what happened, Ted, I woke up one day and I said, look, man, first of all, I was inspired from Woodstock, you know, but I was also moved by the inspiration because what happened once I went raw, my body, man, started talking to me and my mind was going with that message. And basically the message was, it's time, it's time to wake up, it's time to do something about your life. Don't blame what's outside. Go inside and figure out what you need to do because you inspire so many people there that what you can you do to inspire yourself. And I reflected on how things aren't working for me. I came back from Woodstock with no income, no job. Didn't know what to do. And I was like kind of lost in space. So I said, you know, around Thanksgiving, everybody was all jolly, wanting to be around family and never go. A week prior to that, I was kind of like, what am I going to eat? What am I going to do? Everybody's stuff in the face. And I was like, like, turned off by the whole thing. And I said, you know, what I need to do is just stop eating. Stop eating and figure out the answers on my own. And then a week before that, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, I decided to stop eating. And I said, you know, I'm going to fast. I'm going to do like around seven days. <laughs> I'm going to do it on. I'll just take a break so I don't have to be around the family golfing down their face because culture really they love they don't they don't do nothing vegan they just love meat they just love food and they just really like into the whole culture of the eating okay we're all alone you know all my brothers my raw brothers and sisters you know and then around me so I said you know I need to find my own self so I just took a break and I said all right day by day see how it goes and that's what led it off. And then once it started, I didn't want to stop because I started getting some answers. I was the one who was uh, responsible for my own destiny. I was the one who needed to make the change. So I decided to just continue and see where the path went. You know, in addition to that, I recognized that the water fast was the best way for me because I only drink this still water anyway. And so as I was going throughout the process, I realized things started happening. You know, uh, I used to smoke weed, and then I just couldn't smoke the weed anymore. I when just, did I you stop smoking the weed? 
about uh, three, four days into the fast. Hmm. Three, four days into the fast, I said, nah, man, I can't smoke no more because I've taken breaks from weed before, but this was a powerful break because it was like my body just rejected it because I kept smoking to fight it. You know, I felt like, uh, first of all, I went in and I bought a, a, a lot just I felt like I needed it, so I bought a lot, and then I recognized that it, it, it wasn't doing anything for me. It wasn't binding to do anything. It wasn't getting me the effects I was looking forward to. Instead, it was just making it more challenging, giving me the bunchies. And I said, you know, I've done a juice fast before last year, but nothing like this. So I said, all right, boom, forget about the weed. So... I just come, cut it out completely, actually. I kind of lost it, man. About seven days into it, I just gave it away to my best friends. I said, man, you guys take all my weed, take all, all everything. I don't, I, it's not working. It's not working out. I just don't want smoke in me no more. I don't want to smoke. So that was a good cleansing. You know, it just happened on its own. And another thing I noticed, after the water, 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 uh, I started recognizing that my body... I had a lot of shoulder impingements, and then that started releasing my right shoulder, left shoulder, all the weight stayed, and all the all the all the muscles that like relaxing and like uh, the restrictions was releasing, and it felt great. And I said, you know, if my shoulder is relaxing, maybe my hips could, could do the same because even though this process is like. I feel the urge for hunger here. Still, the first week, I was hungry, you know, I was still thinking about food. Yeah. But towards the second week, I started, like, focusing more on what was happening to my mind and my body and my consciousness. I became more aware of things. My body became, uh, even though it was tired, tired, I started recognizing that a lot of pain was, uh, starting to disappear and uh things started to become clear consciously i started seeing through people i started having a shorter fuse for like negativity and uh uh people i started seeing like honesty like i started seeing true, true colors shine through people i started seeing dishonesty I started seeing the things a little bit more clearer and um I started connecting more, having more compassion with people throughout the second week, you know, because the, the suffering for my own self kind of opened me up to other people's, become more empathetic to people. So I liked the second week, but then towards the end of the second week, I started getting a craving. I thought I was going to break. And that's when I started leaning on energy sources around me, like friends, and so, like, one of my great greatest friends here, my brother, student of life, he's the one who brought me to the raw world. So I'd go to him, you know, and he'll, he'll, he'll give me some advice. On, he's very well versed with the fasting. He's also in the great Jews and the fast. So I went to him for some literature, and he said he must read, you know, read and, 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 and exercise the mind. So through him, I was able to launch into another week. He gave me that energy, you know, he gave me, you know, the herbs. Because then I started, I said, okay, I'm not going to make this alone on the water. I need some herbs. So I started implementing some uh, uh, non, no, no, no caffeine, just natural herbs. And I started making my little teas in order to get me through the night. Day, I'd have a tea in the, in the night. What was in your tea, Tuck? Oh man, you'd have like, you'd have like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, holy basil, you know, you'd have uh, fennel, you know, uh, arrowroot, you know, burdock root, you know, just the real roots, roots, just nothing but roots, you know. No green tea, no black tea, nothing like that. Just roots, you know. And I, and um, that was the main thing that helped me because, you know, I work every day and I ride my bike still. 
So when I ride to work, it's about a 30 minute commute. And I realized I couldn't do it all the time. Sometimes I had to get off the bike and walk, walk up hills. I did a lot of breath work. I recognized that sometimes in the morning I started creating rituals in order to get through the day. I couldn't just get up out of bed. I would take like an hour to two hours. I would do dry brushing. I would do um, eye, eye exercises. I would do sun gazing. You know, I would eat the sun with my eyes, you know, and um, I would also pray. I started praying. I started, I started going inward. I started asking for energy inside. I started tapping into my dantian, you know, my stomach started going down into the abdominals beneath the navel. I started um, meditating more. I started listening instead of staring, I started observing, I started to step back and just look at the things that I never seen, you know, or the things that I disregard, like the sky, you know, um, things that we take for granted that just always there. And I started being more uh, cognizant of my movements and how my energy is uh, being utilized on a day to day basis. That was the that 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 was what set me going, like, I need to keep going. And then I went to visit my family in New York to tell them the good news, that I'm on a great path, and that I'm cleaning up my room, I'm job hunting, I'm, I'm making moves, I'm trying to better myself. And my mother's very spiritual, she's a Christian evangelist. And so I was relying on her for like, support however I was that's not what I got instead I was chastised I was uh I was I was begging to to stop wow to, uh, stop you're hurting yourself you look sick they look at me and I said I look like a AIDS patient I look like a cancer patient Where, yeah where's my son where's your muscles Where, where's the strong man I know I said it's not about the physicality so I said uh you must quit your, your, your faith. I question your faith because who do you believe in? I don't believe in the same God you believe in because my God is keeping me whole. You know, I started I started going back to the old prayers I used to do and I started creating my own prayers because one thing about life is it's not for you to duplicate what you learn but to make it your own, you know. So I started creating my own prayer like love and gratitude, love, gratitude, just a few words. And it would push me through. And that's what really kept me going to see the opposition in my family. It made me more motivated. It made me stand up. I felt like I go into my man's shoes when I went home. I stood up to my mom, stood up to my sister, because they wanted me to stop. They're very heavy into the food. And they thought I was sick. Wow. They were like, they were telling me I lost too much weight. And at that time, I was, I just only lost 20 pounds. I was, I went from 170 to 150, so I wasn't shrinking that much. But each week, I lose 10 pounds. Each week, I go down 10 pounds, You lost man. 10 pounds a week, bro. About, yeah, that's my average. Right now, I'm about 135. Holy, you and, and, and you're 135? And you're 135 now, and when you started, you were about 165? 170. 170. 170, yeah. Wow. Dude, when I saw you at, at Woodstock, you were probably the most muscular guy there. Yeah, man. That, that's, that's gone, man. You know, my muscles are there, but it's all, I look, you know, I'm going to take a, I'm going to, I'm going to have it on, I'm going to have a picture. I'm going to take a picture of how I look once I, uh, Saturday. Get Saturday, someone, a, get someone to take the picture of you. Cause when you take the picture yourself, it's a bit different, but someone takes a picture of you, then it gives us a better view. Yeah, they're going to do that. My, I'm going to let uh, my brother Jeremy do that in the light. I'm going to ask him to do that for me. I'm, you know, one of my brothers to do that for me because the whole th the whole process, I only weigh myself three times. You know, I started you know, to disregard the number. I didn't want to look at the weight. I couldn't feel myself shed. All I felt shed in was the, 
was the negativity in my head, was the fear and the anxiety and the depression that I had. And like the worries that I had, that was shedding. The pain in my shoulder was shedding. The, the doubts about society were shedding. Another reason why I kept going was I look around society and I see things happening around, things that made me recognize that people are are tired of things, tired of the government, tired of suffering and their loss, and they're being bombarded, and they're being constantly bombarded by the external world, and so they're lost. And so I was motivated to, 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 to stray from that and focus on the inside world, the light, because outside is always dark, always dark. If you're looking outside, you're dark got to go inside and then went from outside you see the light so once i see that i was motivated once i heard bush died i said no i got to keep going because if bush died and they're doing all this train action and they're doing all this publicity on cnn and the, or the fires and everything just motivated me to stay fast to the fast because this was so negative i said this is so dark you know, all the movies, I start, the movies started hurting my eyes. I couldn't, I don't watch TV, but when I try to watch the things I like, I couldn't watch it. I'd fast forward to it. My consciousness was too sharp. I couldn't watch certain things. Only certain cartoons and things and documentaries and certain, you know, books I can read. I, so my eyes was very, very, at this point, it was very careful at what it sees. And if it sees things it doesn't want to see, it doesn't continue seeing it for comfort. It just recognizes that it doesn't need to see it and move on. And that's what the food does. It makes you comfortable with garbage. Wow. Makes you comfortable with existence. Makes you comfortable with comfort. And you don't need comfort. Suffering, in a way, can be pleasant as long as you accept the, the, the path and open your will to it and you keep moving with the flow and that's what i love about it because i'm open to the flow i never went no no distance like this and then another thing i recognize as i research is everybody got their own naysay about fast don't do it don't do it don't do it don't do it and i got a lot of backlash from my family no type of support and that's what made me recognize that they already established they got families they got money they got house, they got things, so they feel good. They look at me like you, you a Bushman, you're a countryman. You out there running around doing all this raw thing. You you don't have nothing to show me. You don't have nothing to show me. All you got is, is a good body and good health, good mind. You know, where's your money? Where's your car? Where's your this? And that's what motivated me because all those things will come to me, you know, because that's what I am. I'm always, you never operate from a point of lacking. You know, they show me to operate from a point of abundance. And let me see that everything I have is already good enough. And I can't give so much more. So I don't need to worry about lacking, lacking in money, lacking in that. Because as I go through the fast, I realize that the people are lacking. They're lacking. And so they keep trying to decorate with all this fake stuff that just don't last. They just come to pass quickly. And so I recognize that I'm on the right path. So fasting is the right thing. And then it starts with willpower. And then it finishes with um, you recognizing that you are divine and you can grow to your own um, journey. And that's what kept me going because every day it was difficult that the energy fluctuates. Sometimes I feel energized. Sometimes I don't roll out of bed. Uh, so I don't work all the day. I have part-time jobs, so you know, you know. What do you do for time, work, Chuck? I work in a, a fitness center. You know, I'm a front desk advisor. So you and, work. Um, you work. You work at a at a fitness center at the front desk, and you rode your bike to work yeah. every day, and you engaged with people every day at work, even while you're fasting. On my feet. On my feet. I feel stay on my feet. My shifts are short. They run from five to six hours. Sometimes I do eight hours, but five, six hours is good enough for me. I stay on my feet, no sit down, interact with people. At a point, I got a complaint at work that I was giving off body odor. You know, 
my boss was saying, you know, I understand you're fasted. I told him I was fasting. This was like doing Thanksgiving. I said, we got a complaint about my bio. I said, yo, you know, that's me, you know. You know, I don't use uh, all the stuff guys use. You know, I'm a natural man, so you know, I'll fix that up. So, you know, I started recognizing that, you know, people were, I was starting to get the opposition from society. So I said, okay, let me fix them up real quick. And then I did that, made sure I can continue. And then I, I told him, I said, look, uh, after the, you know, I told him a certain limit. I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to stop after the 10th day. So I told him I stopped just so they wouldn't worry about it. Then it could leave me alone because people don't understand. You can't tell them things. So I just leave them alone because I didn't want them to tell me not to come to work. You know, they kind of might get worried that I might pass out. So I didn't tell them I was continuing. So I just told them I broke my fast. Meanwhile, I was still fasting. On the low, I would pat up my clothes, wear heavy, you know, wear layers so I look bigger, you know. But my face was just withering down, you know. So, you know, it was in my face, but in my body, I made sure I wear extra layers so they don't think, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, withering away. So I got away with it, and I'm still getting away with it. But um, I recognize you got to take certain actions to do what you need to do and disregard the people around you because they don't know. And, you know, you know, ignorance is bliss. So for you, the best thing to do is to be grounded, be rooted, because, you know, Bob Marley got a song, you know, you know, you know, roots, not the roots, dread, bingy dread. I and I are the root. Some are leaf, some are branches, I and I are the root, and that's the thing, you know. You got people, leaves, they're branches, you know. I'm the root, so I don't worry about the leaves, you know what I mean? So I just do what I got to do because I'm grounded. And and, and fasting gives me more of stability, more more power. What did you do for the, what did you do for the body odor, bro? Easy, man. I got this magnesium aloe uh, uh, deodorant from Whole Foods. You know, invested in that. And then I used my coconut oil and essential oil. I made my own um, concoction. I use lavender. Sometimes I blend it with uh, lime. I have different bottles. I do mist sprays. I do like lime, essential, pure essential oil, and orange, sweet orange essential oil. Also invested in a diffuser. So my clothes always smell good. Nice. So then all of a sudden I started getting compliments. Oh my God, you smell so great. Yeah, yeah. But then it was just like a certain period, you know, that the body was doing that. That that was towards the beginning. That was towards the first 10 days. After that, all of that dissipated. No more odor. Because the body was just flushing out some serious things at the beginning. You know what I mean? But then after that, it was all natural. You couldn't, you know, this, I don't really need it right now, but I still use it for the magnesium, you know? Um, but yeah, I'm a pure natural man, man. I, don't I, do love, I, I love that idea about the diffuser in the, in the with your clothes. So do you have your clothes hanging in a closet and you have the diffuser beneath them? Yeah, exactly. I have it in the room and I have the diffuser constantly going, you know, whenever I need it, I just change the different... I invested in a selection of uh, essential oils. I got about 18 different oils, and I just keep the diffuser whenever I need my mood for meditation or uh, levitation or just for, like, you know, a nice little scent. I just change, you know? Yeah, you know, I like that a lot. Oil. That's a great idea, you know? And, and, and it, what what gave you the idea that um, that you should continue... Yeah riding your bicycle every day even when you're not eating yeah i don't want to be around the people you know i don't want to be it it gives me peace and i enjoy the challenge you know and i believe i can do it and i'm an average cyclist i have three bikes and so i change the bike depending on the route depending on the the weather condition my bike changes so it was always like, okay, how are you going to make it today? <laughs> I 
<laughs> so it was like that, you know, it was fun because you had to challenge yourself. You can't just do it and just make it easy, yeah. you know? So you gotta, you gotta, gotta, once you know you can do something, don't, don't fall back, you know? Right. Challenge yourself because, you know, there's times I'm coming home and I'm like, nah, I cannot take this hill. Get off the bike and walk it. And that felt good. Hmm. I was like, yeah, I can walk with this bike. I walk with the bike. And sometimes I walk like halfway. And then as soon as I'm going down the hill, I jump on the bike, you know? Yeah. And also it's like I live a distance. And where I live, it's not really a friendly neighborhood. So I don't want to be around people on the, on the public transportation and the words they're saying and, and the conversations and all this stuff was just not what I'm about. Yeah. And I didn't want to surround myself with that. So I just said, you know, I like the peace. I like the breeze. Mm-hmm. And when I ride the bike, I could, I could look at the sun. I could feel the breeze. All of these natural things that happen to me while I'm riding kept me going. I could do more breath work. You know, if I'm on the bus breathing and meditating, people looking around, you know, I just like it. I only utilize the bus maybe three or four times during the last month. Wow. You know, just so I can, you know, those days when it was totally bad weather, totally rainy, totally tired, totally spent, I did it. You don't, you don't, you know, you got to find a balance. You can't force yourself to kill yourself. You got to just recognize when you got to stop. Right. And I do. I don't do it at all, you know. I don't kill myself when I do it. When if I know I got to stop, I jump off and I take the bus. But, you know, I still travel. You know, I go to Jersey. I take the transit. I go to New York. I visit the family. I spend a lot of time with the family because... Uh, they still, you know, I recently came back last week. That was my last weekend with them. And I was at 140 when I saw them. And they were like, uh, they just kind of stopped talking about it. They just kind of shake their head and just was like, we want you to eat, but we can't tell you what to do. So you ready? And then I said, be excited because I gave them a set date. I never had a date yet. So I said, you know what? Saturday, I'm going to break because... One, it's time. I'm feeling my hunger is coming back. The whiteness of my tongue is gone. My appetite is back. What I did too also, I got all my favorite treats. I put them in a special place and I look at them. All my favorite nuts, all my favorite dates, all my favorite figs. And I talk to them, you know, I say, look guys, I see you soon. And that <laughs> makes me feel good. Yeah, man, because you got to let them know. And it's also, it's like, it just shows your connection to the food, you know? And it just shows that you appreciate what you eat and that you can withstand the desires. You can withstand the cravings. That means you're just on another level. But the first the first week, instead, it was the opposite. I made sure nothing was in the house. Right. <laughs> nothing was around. But then I started shopping and I said, I can shop. I could get what I want, and I just started loading up because I know the time was coming. And so now I pass by them. I said, hi, guys. You know, see you soon, you know? And so um, Saturday, I chose Saturday once I recognized that it's going to be the longest full moon in 10 years, and it's a special day. And uh, 33 is a very powerful number for me, man. I will claim that that's my 33, you know. Today is my 33, actually. Speaking with you is my actual 33 day. And I'm proud of that because it's a very powerful number for me. And I'm glad that we're having this interview on this special day. But when I go live on Saturday, it's still going to feel like I'm at 33. Wow. You know, I'm not breaking today. I'm not breaking tomorrow. Hmm. Saturday, I'm going to break because it lines up with the moon. And uh, Saturday morning, I wake up. I have some coconut water because the refeeding process is important. Yeah, bro, I want to talk with you with the refeeding because I feel like a lot of people, 
They they fast all right because fasting is basically, you know, consume nothing, and you can't really screw that up. But a lot of people do screw up the refeed by by eating uh, too much too soon or by eating the wrong foods. So what is your plan for having a what you would consider successful refeed period? Cool. Successful refeed period is recognizing how your body went through its own transition without, throughout whatever time period you went. Whatever notes you took, mentally or physically, review those notes and then think about where you want to head moving forward. And for me, I want to head out with energy and replenishment and vitality. So I'm going to start off with some coconut water, some grape juice, so liquids, pure liquid for a couple of days, maybe one or two days, grape juice, tomato juice, um, coconut water. Uh, right now I have aloe. I take the aloe plant. I bathe my skin in aloe. Take the aloe, cut it open, wash my face with aloe revitalizes me, wakes me up. You know, sometimes when I get the cravings, I brush my teeth with the aloe, wash out my mouth with the aloe. The bitter aftertaste takes away every craving I want. Wow. And it also, like, gives me a boost. So things like that you need to do, I feel for myself. And then, uh, I love the juice. I'm a juice man. So... I feel like I'm going to enjoy the liquids for a while, maybe three days of juice. And just enjoy that. And then from there, slowly transition into uh, fruits, mangoes, mm. you know, my favorite fruits. Yeah, bro. Mangoes, uh, oranges pineapple, juicy fruits, and not necessarily anyone. And when I chew them, I'm not going to swallow and have the thing. I'm just mainly sucking them out, you know, juicing them, you know, but still chew them, let, let the mouth start moving and chew them, get used to the chewing and the mango seed, you know, suck on the mango seed, things right. like that. Yeah, yeah. Let your mouth exercise. Right, right. Exercise exercise your digestion from the top move on the mouth and then as you get better with that your, your stomach is getting ready it's sending the enzymes in, and then move more like you know the probiotics mm. the fermented foods get some of that coconut yogurt get some of that kimchi cool or putting some of that bacteria back in your stomach cool you know? Don't be a fool about thinking you can just chow food in without no bacteria down there. So get some bacteria down, get the fermented foods, get the yogurt in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you, say, that, when you say yogurt, are you saying like coconut yogurt? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you can get coconut oil, you can get fermented foods. Get yeah. the kimchi in there. You know? Get what you can that's fermented as much as possible. And then, okay, and then, once once you return back to solid foods, at what point will you start rebuilding your muscle? Because I know a lot of people they don't want to fast in the first place because they're afraid of losing the muscle that they've worked so hard to build. So, yeah. at what point will you return to uh, to strength training or, or bodybuilding? <laughs> I have to let my body answer that because honestly. Um, while I'm getting juiced up, who knows? It might be a second day when I decided to just start doing pull-ups. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's just the juice is gonna give me that boost. <laughs> yeah. I have no, I have no, no restrictions cool. on rebuilding anything. Cool. If my body and mind says hold, I'll hold. You know. So the whole idea is my muscles don't come from lifting weights. It comes from calisthenics. 
Mm. And I, the approach has allowed me to work on my symmetry, work on my flexibility, work on the overall body as a unit, not just one piece by piece. Right. And that is the goal. Before I felt like I overdid it in high school and college by lifting, and I haven't lifted since college like that. So now I feel like now I can work on the whole holistically, the body holistically, work on doing handstands, work on doing, you know, you know, um, my legs, work on the proportions, right. work on the whole body acting as a unit, you know, like a bullet, you know, instead of like, uh, you know, a, a separate, like an accessory, like I got big muscles, and, you know, big arms, you know, I want to have like it being together, unified. Right. So I would do more like holes. I would do more ligament work. I would do more standing meditation. Mm. You know, things of that nature. One thing I'm looking forward to is running again. You know, so I would start off jogging, you know, like jogging, see how that works. And then, you know, and then move up. I'm not worried about the muscle too much because once I start to move, my body will enjoy the groove and then it will just form, you know, it will just develop. I have no problem about that. It's just, I don't want to overdevelop by thinking I need to develop. So I don't have to worry about when I'm going to work out because working out for me is, uh, is a natural practice. It's a daily practice that I do it. You know, it's like, uh, just comes to me but once I invest the time and start training I will figure you know give you a better idea I'll figure uh, maybe uh, a week or two I might start making a regimen you know hmm. but the first couple of days I might feel so great that I might start hanging and holding you know and doing constriction holes and you know just to feel how it feels you know i might do a handstand or try to attempt one you know what i mean yeah bro. but throughout the whole process i tell you what i did i did headstands as um, i started doing like 20 minute headstands before i go to bed or when i wake up i would just go on my head turn upside down let the blood rush down wow i do that about every day i do a headstand that's kept me going that kept my blood like if i feel tired or i feel weak i do a headstand and I just meditate, put on some tunes, I put on a book, an audio book, and I do a 20 minute headstand. And then a 20 minutes sometimes be 30 minutes, you know? But it's just it just gets there to that point. That, that was my exercise. Now, Cap, to... you've, you, you've mentioned meditation a few times. Do you have a, a formal meditation practice that you have in your daily routine, or is it something that you just do sporadically? Sporadically. Okay. I used to do Kundalini, but it's <laughs> rapid fire breathing. I try to do it throughout it, but then some days I just couldn't do it. Mm. You know, I was strenuous. It's more like a workout. Right, right, right. So I recognize that headstand works for me just to get on my head right. and go inside and meditate. I cannot do the lotus pose, so I don't sit well. I don't sit well. So I just rule that out. So I would say I'm moving towards that. I want to be able to sit and meditate. When like you, when you say you guys, don't sit well, what does that mean? Like it just hurts your knees or something? Yeah, my hips. Your hips. Yeah. Right. Tight. Right. But now you know it feels better. So I look forward to opening them up. So I can sit on the grass with you guys one day, you know. Yeah, man. We we we. Uh, I mean, you, we can always do standing meditation together too. But um, it's 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 a cool ability to be able to just sit cr comfortably cross-legged. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, and I don't think we need to go full lotus. I think just sitting cross-legged works well. Cool, cool. But um, what 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 are, what are some of the surprises that that came up for you during this water fast? Like, what were some of the hurdles? I know you mentioned like um, having to deal with society and, and people around you and your family and stuff, but what were some internal hurdles or battles that you had to overcome during these uh, 33 days? Being a failure. 
not living up to my potential, not being a leader, and not accomplishing what I'm here to do. Those, uh, those were some internal thoughts that you had? Yeah. yeah. Uh, depression. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I don't, I don't think you're alone with that. I think a lot of people feel those thoughts, and I think those thoughts and feel those emotions from time to time. Um, yeah. But how were you able to overcome them or at least manage them during the fast? Recognizing that the mind plays tricks <laughs> hmm. and uh, believing in myself and praying. Do you have a, uh, a method of prayer that you like to use most? Sometimes I recite uh, if by Bridget Kipling, Invictus by William Ernest Henley, the Lord's Prayer, Lord is my shepherd, and uh, sometimes I just say, I love you, hmm. Father, thank you, universe, that's it, nothing complicated, right. it comes from the heart. It doesn't come from the heart, it's just words. Yeah, true, bro, truth. Uh, what, what, what were some of the uh, audiobooks that you listened to over this past month? <laughs> Good question. Deepak, The Healing Self. Also got, um, I did a lot of Alan Watts, um, Edward Becker. The book, I also have Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee? Yeah, Bruce Lee. Very wide variety, but those were the main ones that I turned to. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm starting my water fast on the day that you end yours. And uh, I'm going to also attempt to do no internet for those 10 days as well. Good, good. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load up on, on a couple audio books and a couple good uh, albums of songs I like and musicians I like and, and I got a couple of good books here with me I can read um, but are there any uh, tips or tricks or bits of advice that you'd want to give to someone like myself who's just going to start out on a 10 day fast um, follow your heart believe me in self and don't focus on what everybody got to tell you. Cool. Take what you can from them. Take what you need from them. Right. And apply your own style. I like that, That's dude. It. I like that. You got it. I believe in you. <laughs> Thank you, man. Hey, man. Props to you. Big, big ups. Big props, man. Yeah, man. Where you at now? Where you at? I'm currently in Hawaii. Man, I thought you were in Canada. <laughs> I, I I was, bro. I I uh. No, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not out there. So uh, you in Hawaii? That's cool, bro. Yeah, I wasn't. Right, I I'm, wasn't planning on coming to Hawaii, but I just decided to like very last minute to just get a ticket and and uh, see about coming here. So man, here I am. Last that's what minute. I love, that's what I love about you, man. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah, you just go with the flow. I love that. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's, all right. it's it's all I know. But hey, man, I met you at Woodstock this summer, and uh, I'm I'm gonna see you again at Woodstock. I I believe in uh, in August, right? I believe so. Yeah, but I'm also gonna see you somewhere else, right? Definitely so. <laughs> cool, There's man. There's no right, That's a definite. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm very, very stoked. Do you want to tell everybody where you're going to be August 9th to the 12th? August 9th to the 12th, Canada. <laughs> Live and direct, Iron Yogi Workshop coming in. We're coming with the vibes. We're coming with the love. This is where it's at. This is going to be ridiculously 
good for your body, mind, and soul. And I'm ready to let go and go with the flow. Yeah, man, I'm ready. <laughs> and I can't wait to meet everybody there. I can't wait to be inspired by everybody there. Can't wait to love everybody there and eat as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Look forward to it. You guys look like you get down. Oh, yeah. You know? And I'm about that. And Canada is open, you know? And, and that's what I'm about. So you're going to see the flow, natural flow, the roots let go. You know what I mean? Dude, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Let's have another chat. Uh, maybe um, after my fast and, and, and I'll see you, how, how you're doing uh, 10 days after you've begun your refeed. Yeah, bro. Yeah, we'll, we'll catch up, bro. I love you, bro. Thank you for the call. Thank you for making your time. Consideration. Always love and light. Always love and light. Thank you so much, bro. Much love to you. And I will uh, be uploading this audio either today or tomorrow. And you can uh, yeah. feel free to share it with your friends, family, whatever. And uh, yeah. thank you so much. And I think people are really going to enjoy this episode. Yeah, man. Love you, bro. Take care, man. All right. Peace out, bro. Ciao. Ever been to a fruit festival before? Because now's your chance to make it happen. Now is your chance to have an experience of a lifetime. Prepare yourself for four jam-packed days filled with education, motivation, inspiration, new friends, live music, high quality fresh foods, hands-on workshops, and so much more. Want to come to a fruit festival? The 2019 Canada Fruit Fest could be the ideal experience you've been dreaming of. The magic unfolds August 9th through the 12th in the beautiful Okanagan Valley of Kelowna, BC. The 2019 Canada Fruit Fest, Canada's number one plant-based health and wellness festival of the summer. Visit www.canadafruitfest.ca to learn more. August 9 to the 12, Canada. <laughs> Live and direct. Iron Yogi Workshop coming in. We're coming with the vibes. We're coming with the love. This is where it's at. This is going to be ridiculously good for your body, mind, and soul. And I'm ready to let go and go with the flow. Yeah, man, I'm ready. <laughs> and I can't wait to meet everybody there. I can't wait to be inspired by everybody there. Can't wait to love everybody there and eat as much as possible. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking dude. Forward to it. You guys look like you get down. Oh, yeah. You know, and I'm about that. And Canada is open, you know, and, and that's what I'm about. So you're going to see the flow, natural flow, the roots let go. You know what I mean? Dude, I'm pumped. I'm pumped.